Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is White Black Vampire Monument. So I'm gonna start things off first talking about how the black white vampire build is so diverse. There are so many different ways you can go with this particular build. You can go infinite uh, with the Oathsworn vampire there. You can go uh, the monument version, what we're doing with Oketra monument. You can go Bantu's monument version. You can go Yahini version with more tokens. You can just go in so many different directions. It's ridiculous. But from this particular version, I went from the mono white monument version and kind of like tilted it a little bit to make it black white uh, to add our Legion Lieutenant and some more like uh, things that can help with removal. But of course, before we get into it, make sure to like the video if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. We have more content like this going forward from here on out. Rivals of Ixalan has so much to offer for us. Tomorrow will be pirates, and the following day will be dinosaurs. And holy jeez, dinosaurs is redonkulous. It got there. But without further ado, let's get right into the deck list. Here we have Sky Marcher Aspirant, a one mana two one, our Savannah Lion, basically with Ascend. And if you control ten or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. Uh, because this is a Oketra Monument version, getting to Ascend is quite easy for us. Sky Marcher Aspirant has flying as long as you have the city's blessing. So a 2-1 on turn 1 attacking it on turn 2 is quite good, but a 2-1 attacking it on turn 2 with possible flying in the mid to late game is even better. Moving on here, we have a 4 of Adanto Vanguard. It's probably one of the best vampires in the format right now. A 2-mana 1-1 one, one vampire soldier, as long as Adanto Vanguard is attacking, it's plus 2, plus 0. Pay for life, and of course it becomes indestructible until end of turn. So this is a great card in the early game to get some, some extra pressure, maybe trade with some uh, key blockers uh, with our opponent, probably some mana producers, things like that. Adanto Vanguard is ridiculous, especially once we start getting it up in the uh, plus one, plus one range, thanks to all of our lords in the deck. Speaking of lords, we have our first one, Legion's Lieutenant here. This is a two mana, two, two Vampire Knight. Other vampires you control get plus one, plus one. This is a very good card for us, very great at being able to uh, pump our entire board state. And of course, it's not a legendary, so we can play multiples of these turn over turn, back to back. And of course, having multiples in the battlefield means this is a three, three, as well as the other Legion Lieutenant being a three, three as well, making them even harder to deal with. Legion Lieutenant for us is the new Lord from Rivals, and I love it. Can't wait to uh, play it in the actual testing for the stream today. Next up here, we have Martyr of Dusk, a 2-mana 2-1 Vampire Soldier. This is a great card for us because when Martyr Dusk dies, it creates a 1-1 Vampire Creature Token with lifelink. So this does get around like the Fumigates, the Bantu Slash Reckonings, the Board Wipes that are coming in from the sideboard in Game 2. While Martyr of Dusk may not look like much uh, on the first turn it's played, uh, with Catcher's Monument out, it is only just a 1-mana 2-1 that does give us another 1-1, and and when it dies, it still gives us a 1-1, so it does replace itself, and I think that's swell. Not to mention the extra 2 power there, with it Lord out, does make this a 3-2, which is okay. Moving on to another Lord for us, though, in the 2-mana slot, we have Metallic Mimic, a 2-mana two 2-1 two Shapeshifter. You know it's in here, it's Metallic Mimic, it's tribal. Uh, enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Metallic Mimic is a chosen type in addition to its other types, and each other creature you control with a chosen type enter the battlefield with an additional plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So a great way for a Legion Lieutenant and Metallic Mimic to kind of interact with each other, making sure we either have a 3-3 three, three Lieutenant when it comes in the battlefield first, with us casting the Metallic Mimic first, or we have a uh, Metallic Mimic that's coming in as a 3-2, able to either trade with a creature or start attacking in. Either way, both are great for us as far as building out our board state. Next up here we have Legion Conquistador. This is doing two things for us. It's a 3-mana 2-2 two -two Vampire Soldier that can actually be cheaper thanks to a Ketra's Monument, but when Legion Conquistador enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards named Legion Conquistador, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is basically thinning our deck by 3, looking for the other Legion Conquistador. Getting these into the early and mid game is amazing because it does help us kind of press our advantage on the board state and kind of also recover uh, from a giant board wipe if our opponent does have that on turn five, turn four, and turn three if they have Bantu's Last Reckoning. Uh, Legion Conquistor as well is gonna be able to be pumped with the uh, Metallic Mimic and of course the Legion Lieutenant. So being a three, three for three isn't terrible, but being a three, three for three that does tutor uh, three other three threes uh, is awesome. And the last three creatures in the creature slot for us are Maverin Fane, Dusk Apostle, a three mana two, two legendary creature, Vampire Cleric, and whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attack, that includes itself, uh, create a 1-1 white vampire creature token with lifelink. So a great way to go wide, a great way to uh, build out a board state, and again, if we have Metallic Mimic on the battlefield, those are automatic 2-2s, two -twos, as well as Legion Lieutenant. Those could be 2-2s two or 3-3s, three thanks to the Metallic Mimic and Legion Lieutenant. Again, a lot of synergies in the uh, creature base here. We really want to be going out wide. We really want to go deep with the vampires and get out as much damage as we possibly can, as well as gaining some life. But let's move on to uh, spells here and artifacts. We have the four of Oketra's Monument, a three-mana legendary artifact. White creature spells you 
cast costs one mana less to cast. So everything in the deck is a white creature besides Legion Lieutenant, which is white and black. Uh, but whenever we cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance. So a great way to uh, build out our board state again, hopefully flipping for cards like the Legion's Landing here, a one mana white legendary enchantment. When Legion's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, it creates a 1-1 white vampire creature token with lifelink. And when we attack with three or more, and when we attack with three creatures, it transforms into a Danto, the first fort. Of course, that taps for white mana, and we can pay three and tap it, and it creates a 1-1 vampire creature token with lifelink. Getting a turn one Legion's Landing down and being able to flip this as soon as possible is gonna be amazing for us to help build out for Ascend, as well as building out our board state to make sure that we can actually have longevity or flexibility in the mid to late game against uh, spot removal and of course board wipes. We have so many other enchantments in here as well, including Radiant Destiny. This is a card from Rivals that I really like here as well. A three mana enchantment with Ascend. As Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control the chosen type get plus one plus one, which of course we would choose vampires or warriors, depending on where we're at in the match. As long as you have the city's blessing, they also have vigilance. So a great way for us to also have vigilance on our creatures and plus one plus one to our board state that isn't just Legion Lieutenant or Metallic Mimic. So this is basically our ninth and 10th Lord in the deck, which is fantastic. Moving on to some removal for us, because we definitely need it because the Florent is so fast right now. We have three Thopter Arrest, a three mana enchantment. When Thopter Arrest enters the battlefield, exile target artifact or creature and opponent controls until Thopter Arrest leaves the battlefield. So, so in the uh, Dinosaur matchup here, there's Thrashing Bronzodon, which shuts down the Thopter Arrest completely. Uh, we do have other cards in the sideboard here to help deal with that. But against basically every other uh, like matchup right now, Thopter Arrest is fantastic. Fantastic on turn three, helping us shut down a uh, Oathsworn Vampire or a Yahini, or maybe even shutting down like a Metallic Mimic or a uh, Mistbinder on our opponent's side of the field in the Merfolk matchup. Uh, Thopter Rest is a great way for us to just gain some tempo on turn three if we don't have our Oketris Monument. Uh, and lastly, we have two cast out in the main board here. We've got to get rid of some of the uh, non land permanents like Planeswalkers, uh, and any kind of other enchantment we don't really like. It's a four mana enchantment with Flash. When cast out enters battlefield, exile target non land permanent and opponent controls until cast out leaves the battlefield. Of course, as cycling for one white mana, but we will rarely use the cycling because there is just so many things we want to remove in game one against our opponent. But that is all the cards in the actual main board besides lands. Let's go over lands real quick. We have one of Ark of Araska. This is a land with a send, and we can tap it for colorless mana and pay five and tap it. Draw a card, activate this ability only if you have the city's blessing. Uh, this is a really, really good mid to late game card for us. We really only want one in the deck though, uh, because uh, it's really great at being able to kind of like build our hand back out uh, from a board wipe that is happened maybe once, maybe twice, maybe three times in the match. We have lots of life uh, thanks to our lifelink creatures, but we really need a way to kind of get our advantage or get card advantage back into our hand so we can kind of build out our board state once again. Ark of Araska does that for us. And of course, moving on to the other lands here, we have four of Concealed Courtyard, a fast land tapped for white and black. We definitely need that. And three Chef at Dunes since we're going so wide. This is a great way to end a match for us. Play four, sacrifice a desert. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And of course, if we have like 10 or 12 creatures on the battlefield, that's probably going to end up uh, being the GG for the match. And of course we have four Swamp and nine planes overall. And that is the full 60. The game one game plan of course is to turn one get out either the Sky March or Aspirant or the Legion's Landing, turn two get out an Danto Vanguard, turn three get out an Oketris Monument, and then just start going to town with really cheap creatures, building out our boards with Metallic Mimics and Legion's Lieutenant, and just kind of making our entire board set huge uh, so we can kind of continue to go out against our opponent. Of course, we do have flexibility. We can actually name the Metallic Mimic Gaming uh, Warriors. So whenever we cast a creature spell, if we have the Oketra's Monument on the battlefield, we make 2-2 Warriors with Vigilance, which is also good too. And depending on where the game is at as well, Radiant Destiny could come in naming Warriors too. So we have two flexible Lord options in our main board here uh, to help us kind of pump our board state. But let's say we're up against a really large board state uh, like Merfolk, a really big board state like Dinosaurs. What can we do in game two? Let's go to the sideboard here. Uh, first two cards for us, of course, is Scavenger Grounds. We have cards with Eternalize and Bomb, and of course the Godfrey gift strategy we really want to be dealing with. Uh, Scavenger Grounds is going to help deal with that here. Next up here, we have three Duress here uh, against a heavy removal strategy or control strategy. Duress is going to help us kind of uh, make sure we can shut down their strategy in the early games. Turn one Duress is always really painful against an opponent, especially if they're on control. Of course, it reveals target opponent's hand. You choose an online creature, non online card from that, and that player discards that card. So basically, search for Ascanta, approach the second sun, things like that we want to shut down in the game one or game two uh, matchup. Uh, next up here, we have two Fatal Push. Uh, Merfolk Pirates they're super fast right now, and they're really hard to deal with, uh, especially the Is It Pirate build. They are incredibly fast. Um, they're basically helping. Like, it's just like they either win immediately or they just fall flat on their face. But Fatal Push is really here to help 
us to make sure we can actually kind of get rid of their tempo and to slow them down a little bit. Uh, next up here, we have two Fragmentized. If we're up against a Curse deck or if we have against a uh, Search Rest Cancer or maybe another Legion's Landing deck, uh, Fragmentized is here to get rid of another Arketra's Monument, a Bantu's Monument, and of course, any kind of cast out things like that that we don't want hitting our battlefield. And moving to the four mana slot, we have two Settle the Wreckage. Dinosaurs are super real right now, and that 12-12 Trampler is going to be a giant pain in our side. In game two, we're going to want to board in Settle the Wreckage to hopefully deal with that as quickly as we possibly can on turn four. Um, the most often they get it out on is turn five, believe it or not. Uh, I've seen it sooner, actually, uh, thanks to cards like Ronas. But of course, the uh, Settle the Wreckage does deal with those cards really well, being able to target our opponent and just completely remove them from the game. Next up, we have two Vrasix Contempt. Uh, Chandra and Haltley and even uh, the new uh, like Minotaur Planeswalker are kind of hard to deal with Planeswalkers sometimes. And Vrasix Contempt is, of course, here to deal with that, uh, but also deal with any kind of hard to deal with creatures as well, especially those dinosaurs I mentioned earlier. Uh, Vrasix Contempt, of course, is a four mana instant exile target pl creature or Planeswalker. You gain two life. Gaining two life for us is very good, too. And the last two cards in the sideboard for us are Dusk to Dawn, uh, one of the best cards for us in that actual sideboard to bring in from game one into game two. Dusk is destroy all creatures with power three or greater, and Dawn is five mana sorcery with aftermath. We can return all creature cards with power two or less from our graveyard to our hand. And spoilers, every single creature in our entire deck is power two or less, uh, thanks to all the lords we actually have. So we can actually get out our entire graveyard back into our hand, which is amazing. In the mid to late game in game two, if we were able to get off a Dawn, it can sometimes swing an entire match uh, back from the brink of despair to victory. But that is the full 75, guys. Let's look at the deck list right here. On MTGO Traders, it's coming to about 89 tickets, and on paper, it's coming to about 145 bucks, which isn't too bad for a vampire build. Again, there are so many different ways you can take the vampire build. This is just my particular way and the way I like to build the deck because I really like to go wide or as wide as possible, build up with our lords with Metallic Mimic, Legion's Landing, and Radiant Destiny, and then hopefully get that Vigilance and just kind of swing out for the win. Of course, Chef at Dunes is there to close out a match as well, and Thopter Risk cast out, and even the Settle the Wreckage in the sideboard are great ways to shut down an opponent. But that is the full deck deck, guys. Let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you have any suggestions for it? Again, there are so many different ways to build this. I've just said that like three or four times, uh, but it's just kind of crazy because we have so many pieces now to take it in different directions. Thanks to Ravels of Ixalan. It's such a good set. I'm so excited to uh, kind of play with this build and hopefully get into a different version of the Vampire build and kind of like do another deck tech in the future on it. I think that would be awesome. But that's it for the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you guys during the stream or in the next video.